Hello wonderful people and welcome back to Planet Zoo, thank you so much for jumping back in. In today's episode we are going to be building a habitat for the West African Lion, the most iconic cat in the whole entire world and possibly one of the most beautiful cats you can find on planet Earth. So the whole idea was to create an area where it looked like it was inhabited by humans beforehand and it's just again been recreated into a habitat to occupy the lions. Now I built kind of this uh, building at the back where it's kind of the area where they will be sleeping and also I thought as I was building it I built a nice balcony which is where I wanted them to actually sleep and rest and also inside as well so they have two levels to sleep now the top balcony part that you will see later on will allow the lions to go up to another level and uh, be able to rest and sleep there and also at the end of the video you'll see I tried to set up some uh, live cameras not the live cameras that are uh, built into the game but the actual ones are using my editing software which I think came out really well and gives you that kind of real feeling that the animals are there and you're watching them live. Now as I was building this I was uh, I always kind of struggled to think how I want to make the barriers and how I want to surround the habitat and try to make it look as natural as possible. I'm not a huge fan of uh, building walls around habitats I don't think they look natural to me but I tr obviously you know when you go to a zoo and you see these habitats most of them are using barriers but for my probably OCD facts I'm just not a huge fan of it but for this I had to build walls and I tried to make it look like as natural as possible like they haven't been man-made and you'll probably see as well later on that as I'm building them there are gaps in the walls but I use an actual door to cover it up to look like it's been reinforced and fixed by the, uh, the staff people. Again with the actual habitat as well I wanted to kind of recreate something that I saw in Pinterest again I'm using kind of uh, I'm, I'm literally searching Egyptian uh, architecture or Egyptian gardens and things like that so I get a good idea of what's popping up so what we're able to create is kind of things based off the images but kind of keeping it uh, close to the Egyptian style and kind of the Middle Eastern style as well but although we are adding in an animal that isn't very known to be in North Africa more of South Africa and Central Africa I just felt that it'd be nice to add such a majestic animal into the park because we're kind of building a whole zoo based on Africa itself. Now I had plans to build an even larger viewing area which you will see later on. I ended up building a uh, like a, a long straight area where the guests can see in, again using the temple pieces as if we've kind of um, built glasses into it and tried to make the best use of it as possible without actually building more structures onto it and I was going to actually extend that going round further but I realised that the uh, the length of it was perfect, it was lovely for the guests, they saw a lovely view into the habitat, they could see right into it, although they can't see at the top of the building at the back if the uh, lions are sleeping there, in general the view is fantastic I think and it allows everyone to see all the lions running around and doing their thing. So now we're back onto the interesting facts area. So I'm going to give you guys some information about African lions, which I, I think majority of us may know, but I think it'd be nice to obviously go over it. Maybe there's some facts I'm going to read out that you might not know of or might not have heard of, but again, it might be just nice to know. So as we know, African lions are a very endangered animal, and it's estimated that there are around 23,000 to 39,000 lions left in the world. The grand majority of those are in Africa, with a small percentage located in India. The most critically endangered species is the one that we are building here today, which is the West African lion. There are less than 400 remaining in the world. Now in their prime, there was as many as 200,000 wild lions roaming the whole of the African savanna. But their numbers and ranges are only a fraction of what they used to be. Now if you take a look here in the top right hand corner, you can see a distribution map of where the African lions used to be, and the blue highlights being the area where they now exist. Now as you can see it's dramatically decreased over time and it's really sad to see just how little they occupy Africa now to what they used to. Now in for the actual live habitats where African lions live, they tend to live in grassy plains and savannas. They aren't afraid of bleached yellow fields with the sun beating down on them, so they enjoy the sun just like myself, like I think many people do. And at the same time however, they like to stick close to water sources like lakes, rivers or streams. They also like the dense cover provided by trees and bushes. It's common for lions to drag their prey into secluded areas so they can actually chow down in peace and enjoy, enjoy eating without being disturbed. Their diet is obviously as they are carnivores, they like to eat deer, cape buffalo, zebra, wild beasts, sorry wildebeest, I always get that confused, water bucks and even baboons. 
Occasionally a pride will take down an elephant or a giraffe, but this is rare. Now how often do lions actually feed? Now lions feed frequently, they're a lot like humans in the sense that they can't run on fumes for long. It might last anywhere between 10 and 14 days without food, and that's before their bodies start to break down. When they do eat, however, they feast, like actually eat loads and loads. Their average intake is around 10 to 20 pounds of meat per day, not, not a week, per day. And that isn't taking into account the times when they actually go on like gorges where they will take down a large animal and just gorge it down and just enjoy the feast that they do. If you take down a large animal or a herd, lions will stuff themselves silly. Now this reminds me of a, a Labrador that my father used to have that would literally eat until it passed out. Look at lions always hunting groups and now that's the opposite to say a tiger or an African leopard who always seem to hunt alone. They generally find and stalk their prey around the water sources where they can congregate. The other animals come in for a drink and the lions attack. And they aren't very subtle about it. Lions aren't sneaky ambush predators who lie in wait before striking an opponent. Instead, they charge right in for the kill and they don't care if their prey is in a large group. They simply cause a mass panic and use this to ensure the chaos to isolate and overwhelm a slow member of the species. This is where their teamwork comes into play. Once they lock in their prey, they can encircle it and keep it from escaping. Some prides even use the same left and right wing formations every time they attack. Lions use their front and back paws to subdue their prey by knocking it off balance. They might also jump on top of an animal and use their body weight to wrestle it to the ground. If they have a clear shot of the neck, they'll take it. Otherwise, they'll bite the face, nose, mouth, throat over and over until, well, until the animal is on the ground. This is to suffocate the animal while also keeping the lion clear of any horns or hooves that could hurt them. Now another interesting fact is that lions tend to dig into the stomach first when they start to eat their prey. They open the animal's up, uh, abdomen and eat it in entrails. Disgusting. <laughs> They're fond of hearts, liver and kidneys, but they also eat almost anything except for the skull and brain. It's rare for a lion to find those tasty. They leave them for other scavenger predators, i.e. hyenas or, I don't know, maybe flies or even just bits and bobs like that. Now African lions are extremely dangerous, their size and strength make them one of the most formidable hunters in the animal kingdom, and they have naturally aggressive personalities that often cause fights even among members of the same pride. They might even work together to take down a warhog, but once the warhog is dead, it's every cat for themselves. Small and weaker lions might not get a chance to feed at all, while the larger lions will tend to get more food and tend to be a little bit more dominant in those situations. Even mothers have been known to leave their cubs hungry in favour of feeding themselves. Now, I didn't know this myself, but there are on average 50 to 100 people killed by lions every year. The deaths are usually the result of defensive or territorial behaviours on behalf of the lion. It's unusual for lions to stalk humans as prey. Now, there are two other species that I can see here that were uh, roaming the earth but are now extinct. The first one is the Cape Lion. This had a large black mane that extended across its entire torso from the shoulders to the belly. There is also another one called the Ethiopian lion, which had a dark brown mane with black tips. Now one of the rarest lions is the blue-eyed white lion. They are so striking that African tribes have worshipped them as gods or, or the favourites of the gods. One legend has that white lions were the first animals to be created, so they'd be the last animal to die. When all other life has ended, the roar of the white lion will be the last thing ever heard in the world. Now to tell the difference between Asian lions and African lions, the easiest way to differentiate between Asian and African lions is by looking at their bellies. The Asian lion has a vertical fold of skin that runs along its stomach and this feature isn't present in African lions. Aside from that, African lions are bigger and stronger than Asian lions. They also have larger manes and tails. One interesting fact to know about uh, Asian and African lions as well is that they can't cross breed. So there was a disastrous attempt made in the 80s, but it produced a weak, sickly hybrid that didn't survive very long. Now, it's kind of surprising because you can cross breed tigers and leopards uh, with different types of their own species, but with Asian and African lions, it just simply doesn't work. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, giving you some facts there about the African lions. If you do enjoy it, don't be afraid to let me down, uh, let me know down below. Leave a comment as, as well if you like the habitat and if you also want to see something else in the uh, Africa park, just put a comment down below, give some suggestions and I'm very open to trying it and having a crack at it as well. So yes, I hope you enjoy it guys and I shall catch you very soon. Thank you for coming along. See you later. Bye bye.
Oh, <laughs> my